Hey YouTube, uh, this video is going to show you how I fixed my uh, robotic Polaris uh, pool cleaner. Uh, this would probably work on any Polaris or Zodiac pool cleaner of a similar model. Um, I ripped the cord out uh, of the what they call the swivel unit as you can see. And uh, this cord uh, with the swivel unit goes for anywhere from $300 up to $450 uh, retail. And uh, I'm going to show you how I fixed mine for 25 bucks. So if you're interested in seeing that, you know, stay tuned. Uh, but before I do that, I'm, before I show you, I just got to give you this quick legal disclaimer. Uh, I'm not authorized by Polaris, Zodiac, or anyone else to make this repair. I'm doing it on my own personal equipment. Uh, I'm not recommending anyone try this. Uh, it, th I'm dealing with electricity here. Uh, it, it may be illegal in certain jurisdictions for people to do this. You might need a, a licensed electrician. It's electric, so it could cause serious bodily physical injury or death. I'm not recommending that anyone do this. You're responsible for your own safety. But if you want to see how I did it and what worked for me, here we go. Okay, so here's the unit. Uh, I've already taken it apart and figured out what I need to do, but uh, I want to make sure that anyone who's going to follow this sees it. So. Uh, I'm going to use, I put it back together and I'm going to show you how it was when it originally was broken and then I'm going to go through the fix. Uh, I'm going to use four tools for the disassembly and one tool for the repair. Pretty basic uh, and cheap. You can get them, everything I'm going to use here at Harbor Freight for probably like 25 bucks if you need it at Harbor Freight tools. Um, it's okay. So here I go. Um, you just want to do everything uh, slowly. It's plastic, so things can snap uh, if you're a little too aggressive. Um, slow and steady is the key. So you're going to take a Phillips, a number two Phillips, uh, and you're going to undo these stainless steel screws. Now, um, it has these locking tangs uh, that you're going to have to depress. They're on both halves of the shells. Um, you don't want to use too much force in depressing them. You just just enough. If you go, if you put in too much, you're going to snap them. But, so to open this up, you're just going to take a precision flathead screwdriver and you can stick it sort of in between the two shells. And then um, this screwdriver doubles as a flathead and a Phillips. So I'm going to take the flathead side and I'm going to depress on the locking tang while I insert the precision screwdriver into the recess. And I'm just going to try prying it apart. Again, I don't want to press this too deep. All right, so that side came out. Now I gotta get the other side before I can fully disengage it. All right, you're just gonna get it past the tang. So again, the same thing, precision head in between the two shells, and I'm just gonna depress the locking tang. There we go. Yeah. So okay. So now I got the shell off uh, on the larger side. So move that over here. Keep the screws here. All right. Locks and tangs are intact. Great. So now I'm going to unscrew this retaining nut and. This gasket, I'm gonna just loosen it up. It probably doesn't actually make a difference, but uh, I'm gonna do it anyway. So I loosen it up. Okay, so now we have to get the top portion of the slip ring out. Um, so inside here is what we call a slip ring. Uh, you'll see it in a moment. In order to get that out, um, there are two recesses in this 
black plastic piece here. Um, the factory probably has a special made tool for installing this. Um, it's threaded below the surface that you can't see, but you, you're going to have to turn it out. Uh, it's hard to, it's in there pretty good because it's got an O-ring seal. So to get it out, what I did, and what I'm going to do it before and what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to take a pair of needle nose pliers, uh, some pretty fine point needle nose pliers. And I'll open them up. And I'm going to get them in those recesses uh, like that. And then I'm just going to keep even pressure and very slowly and steadily, I'm just going to start turning lefty loosey. Okay, and here are the pogo pins for the slip ring that attach to the slip ring. Um, everything on this side, in my case, is good to go. So uh, we can we can discard this for now. Um, and now we're going to move on to the other part of the side so that we can remove this slip ring PCB because that is where our problem is and that's what has to be replaced and uh, you can't buy this PCB um, they don't sell it I guess because you know it only costs like 20 cents or 10 cents to make when you mass produce them and they can't make money on it that's why they make you buy $450 cables but um, I'm an engineer so I just made my own um, and uh, if you want them uh, I will include it, uh, uh, a link in the bottom of the comments. Uh, I'll put them up on eBay. Um, I'm just charging what it cost me. To, 20, I'll charge 25 bucks for them. And uh, I could add to make a few extras. Um, if I run out, you know, then I'll just, I'll put the files and I'll include a bit on how you can send it out to a company to have them made. For you, it'll again cost no more than 20 bucks, and um, it'll take literally five minutes to place the order. I'll include that in the video if I decide I don't want to make them anymore. So, but <clears throat> I want the repair. Let's get this. Uh, let's get this out. So, same thing here. We're going to remove the screws. Okay, so again, now we have them separated. Um, so now to get the PCB out on this side, this is a little easier. Again, I'm just going to loosen this up. I'm going to take this off actually. This totally come out. This comes out, this little gasket, this white gasket comes out. And then uh, I'm going to remove I have to unscrew you don't want to ruin these threads right so you have to keep you have to you're gonna have to stabilize this inner threaded portion right here while you turn this nut this kind of funky nut off so what I'm gonna do here is I'm, I'm just gonna take a little Once you got loose, you can you can do it by hand. But getting it initially loose is the tough part. So okay, so now this is going to come off. Cool. Now this is going to come out that way, like that. And now I'm going to remove the PCB by just 
pulling these tangs back. And that's where the snap occurred. And you'll see that the uh, you can't re-solder it because when it rips out, it normally rips the copper with it. Uh, and so you only have uh, the substrate of the PCB, the FR4, they call it, um, there. So it, you have to replace it. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to take one of my PCBs and I'm going to solder the leads from my robot onto here and put this back together. So I'll do that in a second. All right, so super duper important is the order of which things have to go on the line prior to soldering. You need the, the gasket nut, the gasket, then the locking nut, then the outer housing, then the inner PCB housing, before you solder. All right, so now I have my board with solder already preloaded on it and my wires tinned. Clean with alcohol. I would use one for cloths, but they're at my day job. This is a multimeter I check for shorts. Okay, so I check for shorts. Now I'm going to pop the board back in the inner housing, pop the inner housing through, 